But this painting here, uh, maybe Jim put it up for that reason. Yeah, that's a like nice one. That's one I like very much. It's almost like a, you know, like a, like a pop group or something. Yeah, it has yeah, 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 yeah. It refers to the Beatles. It refers to? Well, yeah, or to, to pop group. I yeah. mean, uh, yeah. It refers to the very classical. It, it's really, it was in fact really based on it. I was inspired by the execution of Maximilian by Manet. And um, I wanted to connect with it. So I, 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 um, it, it, I mean, the figures are standing like they're going to be executed. But it's not necessarily like, like that. You don't see a gun, you don't see an aggressor. Perhaps he's the, he's the aggressor, you don't know it. Huh? So, uh, and the figures on the side are cut off, like in a photograph, you know, very aggressive. So you don't do this with painting, so that's why I did it. And, um, yeah, it's, it's also very poppy. And, and, and he has the... Yeah, he's, he has a black... It is a shadow, it's a, in fact, it's the shadow of the man standing on the left, you know. You see his shadow go behind his, the back of the middle person, and it creates a black halo. So it's a reversed halo in a way. So when, when you start to make these paintings, do you have do you have the models in the studio? Yeah, the yeah, yeah. I yeah. do uh, I do uh, sessions with models, and I take pictures. I, I don't paint them from the flesh. That's too complicated. I mean, there's too much organization. Then you have people over in the studio all day, all week. My God, I couldn't so, work like this. So how, how did you take what's it like? When you went from a thousand photographs and choose one that gets the right? Well, mostly I, 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 I have an idea what I want, kind of, and then I try to uh, uh, look for a model that can fit in it and I do the scenery, like, like a theater director. Really, that, that's how I worked for the last five years. I don't use found material anymore. I, I do my own uh, scenery. Because I really want to invent images. I really want to make uh, an image that wasn't there before, and that is there now, and that has kind of a relevance in, 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 in contemporary society. I mean, that's my ambition. I'm not saying I'm succeeding in that, but it, it's a noble ambition, I think. Uh, the fact in my early work that, that I used uh, people that looked like from the 40s or the 30s or the 50s, uh, yes. uh, it had to do with uh, also the idea I wanted to create a very universal image. So therefore I thought it would be a good idea to depict man as he was in the tw 20th century man. But if you want to depict a general image of 20th century man, who do you show? So I, I went to the middle of the century. And then you came, you come at, on, in this period of the Second World War, which is interesting. You work with found material, found photographs, and the basic image shines through too much in, in the final work, and that uh, annoyed me. Oh yes, I bring things into the studio and I even make things. I make uh, stuff. Simple things uh, that that have a function in, with, with regarding uh, in what my models have to do. I have clothes made because yeah. I don't want contemporary clothes and I don't want old clothes. So I try to design fu futuristic clothes now for, for my for my citrus. So in a film like we have like a storm. Yes. With the three. Um, yes. Which 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 is. Something that I haven't quite got to, but there's a sense of streaming throughout your through, throughout your practice. The things that you made maybe six years ago get reinterpreted and reconfigured. Maybe a drawing gets reconfigured as a painting, which then gets reconfigured as a now as a kind of film. There's that sense of continuity, but the kind of you know the, the kind of medium changes a bit, um, and um, and this this. Does this refer to any of the earlier works, this particular, this particular film? Yeah, but I, I, this film not, no. no but it was, it was the other one with the, the table. One with the table yeah. with the, uh, uh, the daughter. Yeah, yeah, this one. There's, there's that's the painting. painting. First there was the painting, and when I made this painting, I thought, it's a pity it can't move. So I want movement in this. That's why I made the film. You see, but the other film, 
it was just uh, an idea I had during the shooting of this film. But the other film, in fact, is better. So but it was just at the spot that I thought, hey, I'm going to film this too. They, they, I mean, my actors were just sitting there waiting. And I thought, this is even stronger. Let's film it. <laughs> So, so, so you have to improvise sometimes. How, 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 did, the, how did the kind of um, the transformation take place then from painting to film? Did you reconstruct oh, but you oh, oh, over, uh, he, over here it was, I just tried to reconstruct it. So, so it you was... Made, you had clothes made then? Yeah, yeah, so these clothes are kind of old fashioned, but I had them made more shiny mm -hmm. uh, because it would, that it w would look more like an act, like, uh, you know, mm -hmm. that. Because you, you like to paint things that are reflective? I like to paint things that are shiny. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, I like that. I always liked it from the beginning. Yeah. That's very funny. There must be a, a Freudian uh, explanation for that. <laughs> Maybe it's that because things that I mean, in painting things that are shiny that are painted. Yeah. When you paint them, there's a kind of certain sense of achievement when you get them to look shiny. With you know, with a kind of economy of means. Like you, you you can make a more interesting visually. You can more, make a more interesting painting when there's something shiny in it because it uh, provokes contrast. And it has to do, I think, because yes. We all know a lot of paintings from the past, and we don't know them always by flat. We know them from mostly from reproductions in books. That's how our first contact with it. So it's very indir indir indirect. And that's interest an interesting aspect as well. And uh, most of the paintings were, uh, I mean, poor people, people didn't get painted, or they didn't have paintings. So it was always showing off these paintings. But nice fabric and jewelry and so there were always these shining elements so that so it still works true i want to paint shining elements as well. because this this film work it's it doesn't it hardly moves it's just the light that is flickering yeah. and when you see it projected it looks like a very large painting in fact this is for me this is a painting and it's executed in film and i couldn't execute it better in paint because it's a light image, it's like a diapositive that vibrates because the light is flickering. And you see, so this work is very much finished and I'm very content with it. And, this, and the subject of the work, I mean, it has, it, again, it has lots of different kind of um, possible readings. Yes, of course, it's, it's people waiting there. It's waiting. like uh, Beckett, you know. Uh, <laughs> you know uh, it's called the storm, they're awaiting something. There's a threat from outside, and you don't know what it is. Or it's a suggestion of a threat. Yeah, but it's, it's a very beautiful painting. Yeah. But, but, uh, the, uh, the mythical power of painting grows in time. Yeah. It's more mythical than it was before. It, 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 it's, the weight of a painting is eno can be enormous. Paintings are the most reproduced images. Today. I think every time painting takes a knock, you know, every time it gets, it gets kind of sidetracked, it always gets, seems to accumulate more richness. It gets richer. Yeah, yeah, and it appears to our common uh, unconsciousness in a, in a very cunning way, I think. So. I try to refuse to look at art history in a, in a linear way. I don't find it very interesting. I, I see things uh, repeating. And, uh, and, and when I look at uh, Van Eyck, it's not that long ago, you know. Uh, it was a different society, but, <laughs> but people still look the same. And, uh, and yeah, things have changed. Uh, the context has changed, but basically, uh, this art is still there, and we deal it with, with it today, just as we deal with, uh, with, with uh, Marcel Brutus. Well, we, huh? we, we always have something, we must have something invested in it, otherwise. Yeah, but uh, the, I, I like to see it in a way that, that there is always art added to what there is. It, you know, and, but everything is still there. Yeah. It, it, and everything has an equal importance for me. It, it has. I don't want to make work, my work physical in a way. Of course, painting or drawing it is a physical thing, but it's also imagery. And. Um, and an actual installation is a very physical thing. Yeah. Because 
I've done, I mean, on the side, it's very secret, but I've done some experiments and I tried sculpture and things. It's too concrete for me. I like to present an idea. An idea that goes into your mind. And you can present it through a simple drawing. I can do a very small drawing and with, with, with a very big idea on it. And you can read it through the drawing. So it exists in your head. I don't feel the urge to make it concrete. Yeah. If somebody asks me to do something that I proposed in a drawing uh, and he really wants it <laughs> and there's money for it, I might think about it, but I don't have the urge actually to do it. And, but my paintings and my films are projected sculptures a lot, a lot of times, if you think about it. You do even your drawings? Even yeah, but of course they're indirect. They're not physical, physically there, they're just projections of, or, or, or uh, I try to show something sculptural in a painting or, or in a film. And this is a film and uh, after I finished this film uh, I thought I'm going to cast this girl, I'm going to make molds around it or have it done and I'm going to make this actual sculpture and the girl turns around and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make an exact copy of this girl, very realistic with the same clothes on and put a motor uh, under the structure and make the same thing but uh, make it concrete. So I made it but it was too concrete. It was not a projected thing anymore and I didn't like that. So I, st I have the sculpture in my studio and the sculpture served me to make this painting you showed earlier. This, so this is a painting I made from this Sculpture experiment I did. So, okay, so maybe I, thought, I, I, but I like it. It's confusing my mind because I thought maybe the, the, the porcelain figures yeah. and maybe led on to the paintings that led on to the sculptures. Yeah, 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 there's sculptures. always a connection somehow, indirectly. But this is an actual sculpture I have in my studio and I, I just use it as a model. I'm completely chaotic. <laughs> I, I, it for me, it is necessary that I live uh, in my studio. I mean, I live, I mean, uh, I have a studio and, and I have a living room, it's separate, but uh, um, I, I need to be able to work whenever I feel like it, anytime. I don't work that much, uh, but uh, I, I have no discipline. I mean, uh, Sometimes I see something and I feel it and then I have to do it. Sometimes I, I have two months I don't feel or see anything and then I'm very frustrated but, and it's no use in working then. Because uh, I, I don't have the, uh, the drive, you know. Uh, I need the drive the, to, the believe, to believe in something and then I can do it. And if I don't believe it, uh, I cannot do it right. Yeah. I need to be... Yeah, it's inspiration, I guess. I'm a romantic. I'm a romantic. <laughs> In terms of responding to that, um, it seems to me a lot of your work has artificial lighting in the painting. Yes. And I wondered if you work a lot at night, because it no, seems... No, no. I, I only work in daylight uh, in complete silence, uh, no music. But uh, I enlight my models with artificial light a lot. This is daylight, but, but uh, I use a lot of times uh, like artificial so you like, work mainly in the when I, when, when, Yes, but when I do the photographs, I use a lot of artificial light because it's very interesting to work with. I mean, it's theatre, you know. Theatre also uses artificial light. And, and I think the style has to be just right for, for, for the subject matter <coughs> or the way it is composed. So that, that's, that's very delicate, I think. Um, yeah, but I would like to paint like, for instance, Chardin. He was much more uh, a slower painter, you know. I'm very jealous of him. Yeah, yeah, but his paintings have such a slow quality. Yeah, he's my favorite painter, actually, Chardin. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I, I'm too nervous to paint that way. Yeah. Yeah. He was. Uh, I liked his attitude also. He he was like. Uh, he didn't take himself too seriously. So. I like his glasses. 
Yeah, he looked terrible. <laughs> he, was, he must have been a funny man, I think. Okay, well, I'd like to say thank you very much to Miguel.